Show us 80.5. It's starting tonight already, huh? Stephanie, go around. There's a patient on the other side. So this is a suspected K2 patient? All of them right now. That's what I was just speaking to the medics about. This is their fourth call here tonight. We're out with the Glen Oaks Volunteer Ambulance crew in Queens, New York. They're responding to an emergency call for a bad reaction to K2, a drug made in a lab to mimic the effects of marijuana. Can you look at me? Open your eyes. Look at me. What did you do tonight? We just arrived at the psychiatric hospital here in Queens. There's been reports of someone who's unconscious, and our team's responding to it right now, but we can't get out of the ambulance because we can't actually film on hospital grounds. Uh, you're locked. You got it? What'd you smoke tonight? Three bags of what? Did you smoke K2 tonight? Yeah? So what's going on? How are you feeling right now? Open your eyes. Do you know where you are right now? No, you don't. OK. What's your biggest concern right now with them? To make sure he maintains his airway? Yeah. That his breathing's OK? The sense that I'm getting is he's going out more than when we got there. Yeah, in and out of consciousness. Yeah. He probably knows where he is, but he can't answer me. Right. Hello? You got it? Just make sure that I'm good. Okay, you're good. You're good. Lock it. So we just had a K2 patient in here, and he was kind of going in and out. Is that he, he typical? So, typical, yeah. That's my typical K2 patient. They usually go in and out. When I get, went in there, he's, he's not making any sense. He was responding to my voice, but not responding to my questions. We're seeing now the K2 patients, their blood pressures are dropping, and that's why, what's causing them to crash. It's getting bad because it's consistently happened now. It's not even a break in the day. Like, they're doing it all the time now. K2 is a brand name for synthetic marijuana. It's sold in small packets, sometimes for as little as $5. It's shredded plant material sprayed with chemicals that get people high. It's often sold in corner stores and gas stations as potpourri and labeled not for human consumption. Each batch has a different chemical compound. It's tough because with it being the price that it is, it's the cheapest way to get high. Travis Kessel is with Ridgewood Volunteer Ambulance Corps. Like Kathy, he's seeing more K2 cases. For just a dollar a joint, he says more people are using the drug. The majority of his K2 calls are here in Brooklyn. So who's coming here to buy things like K2 and Spice? It's almost entirely the homeless people. It's a socioeconomic issue. It's a poor drug right now. It's cheap. It's able to be replicated. It's sold openly in stores like bodegas, and it's just playing off of the homeless population. It's killing them. It absolutely is. Every patient is a different story because every batch of K2 is a different story. Travis points out what he says is a K2 deal. So I asked the buyer if he can show me how easy it is to get some. Can I ask you how tough it is to get spice? How tough it is? Yeah, like, can I just get it anywhere? Yeah. Okay. Okay. He buys K2 here regularly, but says when the shopkeepers saw me with him, they wouldn't sell it to us. Looks like no one has any right now. Nobody. So there's no question we're in the right place. We just found this empty bag of K2 right here. It's called Smacked and it's labeled Potpourri. But what we learned is that it all comes down to trust. Unless the guys in the deli actually know you, there's no way they're going to sell it to you. But once you've built up that level of trust, you can get as much K2 as you need. In between calls, Travis and his team hang out across the street from a store known to sell K2. They say it's inevitable they'll get another call from this block and can't do anything to stop it. That's because K2 exists in a legal gray area. 
Makers of the drug try to stay one step ahead of law enforcement by slightly altering its chemical structure to create new compounds that haven't yet been classified as illegal. And the problem is growing. U.S. poison control centers received more than 6,000 K2 calls in the first nine months of 2015. That's almost double the total calls for 2014. And a quarter of those calls are coming from New York, where K2, worth $30 million on the street, was seized in September. You just can't say, oh, this guy's smoking K2 and he's flipping and he's doing that, when there's so much other stuff that's on that person's plate, you know? Evelyn Milan works at Vocal New York, a group that works with drug users. She says there's too much focus on arresting K2 sellers instead of understanding why users are smoking it in the first place. What do you see as kind of the future of, of K2 or synthetic drug use? I mean, how, how can you really stop something like that? We could never stop things like this from happening. The bottom line is that this society is never going to be a drug-free society, whether it's synthetic or not. Like I said, getting to know what people are going through, people should be able to have housing, because the people that are smoking K2 are mostly people that have a mental illness, that are homeless, that are out in the street, you know? If you sleep and you eat and you have a place where you're safe, you know, the outcome is a lot different. Because you're not gonna change what people are doing. Behavior change has to do with the whole, whole person, their environment. At Vocal New York, we also meet Alan, who tried K2 himself and says he's one of many. When I first tried it, I didn't like it because I knew what it was doing to me. I tried, I collapsed twice on the floor because of it. And when I found out it was there and it was doing all that to me, I had to tell, I had to tell myself, I gotta stop, I can't do this. Do you think that there's a safe way to do K2 or is the drug itself just too dangerous? It's too dangerous. Back in Queens, Kathy and her team get another call from the same psychiatric hospital. There's another suspected K2 case. What's up, guys? How's it going? In this community, the majority of the K2 patients are unfortunately coming from uh, psychiatric patients. I know a lot of people are trying to help them to understand that what they're doing is dangerous for them. Some of them are getting really hurt from it. I've never seen so many people use one drug. A drug which is also attracting new users. U.S. drug officials warn increasing numbers of high school students admit to using K2. As for those already using it, it's so cheap and so easy to buy, they keep on coming back for more. <laughs> 